Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are truly blessed and honored today to have you join with us and to have us join you in your homes. And hopefully, hopefully we will join you in your hearts as well. It is truly a blessing for us and we thank God that we can be used by Almighty God to minister to you today, whether it is in song, through a prayer, or through the ministry of God's word. Our hope and our prayer is that you will have an encounter with God, that you will be led to deeper faith and hope and confidence in God. Amen? So as we worship God together today, I pray that you would call your families together. I pray that you, know, you would prepare your hearts to be blessed by God. And this morning, our first act of worship will be to join Brother uh, Richard Taylor in a song of worship and praise. Let's join him at this time. Let's give thanks and, and praise to the Lord for Brother Richard Taylor this morning. What a wonderful song. And as he has uh, sung, we want to now take ourselves to prayer. Let's ask God's blessing and his guidance on today's service. Let's pray. Father God, once again, we enter your gates with thanksgiving. 
and we enter your courts with praise. This is the day that you have made. It is only you alone, great God, could have spared our lives to see this day. For our lives are in your hands. There are so many, great God, who were not able to make it to see this day. But God, because of your mercy and your love, you have spared us. And so we can truly sing, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. And Lord, we know that all that we have ever needed and all that we will ever need, your hands will provide. For indeed, you are Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. It is to you that we look, great God, when we are tired and weary and we need strength. It is to you that we turn, Father God, when we need an open door. It is to you, great God, we turn when the enemy comes in like a flood. When we face all kinds of temptations, it is only to you, great God, that we can turn. And so, Father, this morning, you know every single person who is listening, Lord, or looking at this uh, broadcast today. You know their needs, you know their concerns, you know what they have been praying for, and you know what they have been going through. And so, Father, we pray today that this service, from beginning to end, will be led by your Spirit will be empowered by you, anointed by you, O oh God, so that when it reaches the hearts of those who are listening, it will break yokes and undo burdens, open doors and lift up, Lord, those who are fallen. Father, bless this service today. And Lord, we ask that your will would be done in every single area of our lives as we continue in your presence. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes, so we thank God for this opportunity once again. And we are going to be focusing today in the Word of God on prayer. I want to talk to you today about the principles of prayer. Now, I may not be able to get through more than one point today because, of course, this is a very, very important topic. Uh, this is a time that many persons are learning to pray or getting back to prayer. Many are going through a revival in their prayer lives. And yet there are many others who have questions and misunderstandings about prayer. And I want to address one of those today. And for my text, I would like to use the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18. It is the parable of the persistent widow. Luke, chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 8. And he, that is Jesus, told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused. But afterward, he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet, because the widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Did you hear what the unrighteous judge said? And will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay Long over them, I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? As I said, I want to talk to you today about principles in prayer. Principles in prayer. One of the questions that, uh, as a pastor, uh, comes regularly to me, is the question of why do we bother to pray if God already knows our need? Why bother to pray? If God is omniscient and he knows everything, then what sense does it make I going to him and praying? And that question comes because I believe there is a misunderstanding by many persons about the purpose of prayer. 
Because there are some people who believe that prayer is telling God what your needs are, informing God about what you would like, as though God doesn't know. Uh, there are some people who believe that when you go to pray, you know, it is like you are now giving God some information about your situation. That is a misunderstanding. Prayer, brothers and sisters, is not giving God information. Prayer is not a perfunctory kind of exercise that we go through, you know, without feelings or without effort or without interest. No. Prayer is spiritual warfare. I want us to be aware of that. Prayer is warfare. When you get down on your knees, there is an enemy who doesn't want you, first of all, to even be on your knees. And sometimes the battle is just to be able to get down on your knees and to concentrate on prayer. That's the first battle. The battle to make time for prayer. It is a spiritual battle. It is an existential, ongoing, unrelenting battle that takes place all through our lives. So the purpose of prayer is not to inform God of our needs, but the purpose of prayer is really to, so that you and I could conform to the will of God. We cannot change God. Our prayer does not change God's mind. Our prayer changes us. It changes us as we go before God. There's a beautiful song uh, that says, you know, when I, I get on my knees and I am before the Lord and there he changes me. He changes me. Prayer doesn't change God, but prayer changes you and I. Amen? It changes our attitude. When you get before God, if you have a complaining spirit, when you get in front of God and you begin to talk to God, that complaining spirit changes if you are really talking to God. If you are really talking to the God of heaven who sees all and knows all, if you are sincerely relating to God, that prayer is going to change you from being a complainer to being a praiser. You'll begin to praise God. You'll begin to give God thanks. For as you, as you pray, you begin to see yourself as you really are, and you begin to see God for who he is. You begin to see that you are inadequate. Yes, you begin to see that you are insufficient. It doesn't matter what you have, what resources you have. When you get down on your knees and you get into the presence of God, you begin to realize that your needs are small in comparison to the greatness of our God. And he is great. He's a great God. Amen? Now in the text that is before us, Jesus uses a literary uh, principle to communicate a truth. He uses a literary uh, style to communicate a truth. Sometimes we use comparisons in order to communicate truth. Yes? There are times when you will use a comparison. Jesus uses it very often. He compares the kingdom of God to a man going out to find a lost coin. He compares the kingdom of God to someone who, who, who has lost a son, the lost son. So we, we, we learn truths by way of comparisons. But there are also times when we communicate truth by way of contrast. By way of contrast. Sometimes when you show the difference between a thing, you are able to compare and, and communicate a truth about the thing. Yes? For example, I, well, and I'm using these examples, brethren, you know, be, not to, to pull down anyone. But sometimes if somebody is very tall and you're trying to refer to that person, you would call them shorty. And just by way of contrast, you realize, well, wait, you know, this person is really tall, but we refer to him as shorty, you know, and, and things like that. And Jesus is using a contrast in the text to convey to the disciples the truth about prayer. 
and how we ought to view prayer. First of all, he uses a contrast in terms of a principle, a contrast of principles. In verse 1, Jesus said, well, the, the, the scripture says, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that, or the purpose of which, was to show them that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. Pray and not lose heart. There's a principle in there. What is the principle? The principle is this, that we must pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. And we use the acronym of PUSH, P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. And what he's saying to us here, that in prayer, there are only two options. Two options you have. You can't be on the fence when it comes to prayer. There are only two options. He says the two options are what? Either you pray or you faint. Those are the two options. There's no in-between. It's either you pray or you give up. You can't pray, yeah, and faint. You can't pray and faint. Once you are praying, you will not faint. <laughs> That's what he's saying here. Men ought always to pray and not lose heart. Pray and not lose heart. If you keep on praying, you will not lose heart. Keep on praying, you will not lose heart. And some people don't pray. And, and if we look around in our society and in our world, you would see that there are some people who don't necessarily pray, but they seem to be making it in life. They seem to be making it in life. You know, we look at some people and they, they have no real fear for God. They do not, you know, acknowledge God as their source. They do not turn to God in times of challenge and difficulty. And somehow it appears as though they are making it. But we have to look at those people a little more carefully, brethren. Because very often, what you are seeing is a mask. It is a facade. Yes? A mask and a facade that hides despair. And it hides tiredness and weariness. That is what it does. They look successful. They look as though everything is all right. And we know those kinds of people. You know, they look as though everything is going great with them until you hear something in the news about them. You'd probably hear something about suicide or addiction. You'd probably hear something about violence in the family or violence in their lives. Or, or, or they will end up in jail and then you realize, but wait, I thought this person was happy, they seem to have had everything in life, they seem not to faint, they seem not to get weary. Well, the facade falls because you cannot go on without prayer. Without prayer, the Bible says you will faint. Just think about people like, you know, Whitney Houston and people who seem to be happy. You know, we are having a number of suicides taking place in our society today. And, and, you know, we need, to, we need to look and find out, are these people truly praying? Are they calling upon the Lord? Because you cannot truly be at peace in your heart without peace with God. Yes? The Bible tells us in the book of Philippians that we are not to be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that we will make our requests known to God. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart. It will be like a sentinel. Like soldiers standing, guarding your heart against anxiety and worry and stress and fear. The peace of God comes through prayer. The peace of the Lord comes through prayer. The peace that passes understanding comes through prayer. So when we pray, we will not faint. When we pray, we will not give up. And if you don't give up, the only reason you will not give up is because you're praying. That's the principle. I believe that sometimes as Christians, we give up too soon. We give up too soon in our prayer lives. We're praying for something and we feel that it is not happening quickly enough. 
And, and that happens because we are treating God as though we are informing God and telling God what we want and when we want it. And so we feel that whenever prayer, our prayers are delayed or the answer to our prayer is delayed, we feel that that is a, a sign of God's denial. But delay is not denial. God is always on time. Amen. And he may not be on your time. He may not be on the world's time. But he is on time. He is on time. Always on time. You know, one of the things I've, I've learned about prayer is that there are some things you don't necessarily have to pray for. You shouldn't pray for. They are like, you know, when you're doing a course of study, whether it is a bachelor's or a master's, you have electives and then you have compulsory courses. There are some things in prayer that are electives. You don't have to pray. I have stopped praying, for example, for rain. You know, I've learned to live with whatever comes. The rain falls, the sun shines, and you have to do what you have to do. Got to move on with, with what God has, you know, given you to do. Whether the rain falls or the sun shines. You might have a desire for it to shine, the sun to shine. Or you might have a desire for the rain to fall, but that is in God's purview. I've stopped praying for certain teams to win matches. <laughs> I don't pray for, for teams to win matches anymore. You know, I used, to, I used to do that at one time. You know, those are not things you pray for. But there are some things you have to pray for it. You've got to pray and keep on praying. You've got to pray for your enemies. The Bible says pray for those who despitefully use you and accuse you and say all manner of evil against you. You have to pray and don't stop praying for your enemies. You have to pray for the lost. Pray that God will break their hearts and turn them to Christ. You've got to pray and keep on praying. You may have a relative, a friend, a brother, a sister, a neighbor, somebody that you're praying for. Don't stop. Pray so that you will not faint. And the only way you will not faint is if you pray. That's the principle. Got to pray when you're tired. There are times when I am tired and weary. And I have to pray, Lord, give me some strength to make it. Oh, I want to call on you, brothers and sisters, during this time of pandemic and panic to pray and not faint. Keep on praying. That's the principle to answered prayer. When the enemy attacks, you've got to pray. Oh, yes, brothers and sisters, there are many of us who are being, you know, bombarded by the enemy right now. Some of us, we are being knocked down time after time. It's as though we are in a, in a boxing ring and, and the enemy is coming at us and his only aim is to knock us down. But I want us to know today, brothers and sisters, you are out there and the enemy is coming in like a flood. Hear me today. Pray and do not faint. For my brothers and sisters, the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise a standard before you. When you're down to your last dollar, and maybe I'm talking to somebody here today via this medium. You have been down to your last dollar and you didn't know where the next cent was coming from. And you cried out to the Lord and God provided. That's who he is. He is a provider. Amen. Maybe somebody in this time where everybody is losing their jobs, but you are praying. Listen, don't stop. God opens doors. When God opens a door, no man could shut it. When God makes a way where there seems to be no way, no one can stop it. He provides, he supplies, if you do not give up. If you do not give up. That's the word for today, brothers and sisters. Do not give up. If you, if you not, don't give up, then the Bible says you will continue to pray. If you continue to pray, you will not give up. That's the principle. That's the principle. Uh, and, and there are some other principles I want to talk to you about, but not today. Because when you check the, the contrast, there's a principle in terms of the contrast 
not only of principles, but a person. The judge versus the widow. You couldn't find two more different persons than these two. And I want you to understand a little bit about the difference between the widow and the judge and the difference between God and the judge. we we'll talk about that next week, God's willing. God bless you and keep you. May the Lord help you to stay on your knees. May the Lord help you to stay in prayer. May the Lord help you not to try to inform God about what you are going through. God already knows, but he still wants you to come to him. And while you are in his presence, he will strengthen you. He will change you and he will bless you. Amen and amen. In this time, brothers and sisters, we must turn to God in prayer. Tears to my eyes and heart to see so many children dying daily. Peace, love, and harmony are replaced with murder, kidnapping, and talk about race. Then he said, Jail and don't cry. Dry those tears from your eyes. There is still hope. Go forth and do your work. Put chance in the air. But oh, wave that you just don't care. Put it up for me to pray to the Almighty. But don't wave like you just don't care. Put it up for me to pray to the Almighty. Pray for the ones who get killed each day. For the families who suffer, I say. Pray that we all get a chance to grow up. And pray that the senseless killings will stop. I say to put your hands in the air. Put it up. Put it up, oh, and feel the power of prayer. Put it up, put it up, and feel the power of prayer. I feel the need this morning to pray for someone, someone who is on the verge of giving up. And I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that just before the dawn is the darkest moment, just before you are about to give up, that's when your breakthrough is about to come. And the enemy knows that. And so he tries to, to, to destroy you before you get your breakthrough, to break you down before you get your breakthrough. I want to pray for you today. Let's look to God in prayer this time. Father God, you know every single heart, every single circumstance. You know, great God, those who are listening, those who are, who are, who are hearing this message today. And you know for whom this message was sent. Lord, I pray for someone this morning. I pray for that person who has been uh, serving maybe without thanks and without appreciation and they feel like giving up. I pray now, great God, that you will give them an extra unction to keep on functioning, to keep on serving. Someone who has been praying for a job, that job, Lord God, that will assist their families to survive. Someone who has been praying for a home, praying for a house of their own. Someone, great God, who has been praying for their daughters, their sons, their, 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 their loved ones. Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you will open a door. You will give, Lord, grace. You will give strength. Father God, that that person who is about to faint will get an injection, a fresh anointing, Lord, for the journey that is ahead. And Lord God, as we, as we come before you, I pray that you'll continue to change us and transform us. Those of us who have been complainers, Lord, as we pray, make us into praisers, worshipers. Those of us who have been negative and pessimistic, help us, oh God, to keep our focus on you at all times. Those who have been distracted by this, this, this pandemic, Lord, 
help them to turn their eyes upon Jesus and to look full in his face so that everything else will grow dim in the light of his glory and his grace. As we come into your presence, Lord, you transform us into what you would have us to be. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to just share a few quick words of encouragement and announcements with you. Uh, Tuesday coming, next Tuesday, of course, is Republic Day. And it's a holiday in Trinidad and Tobago. And we are going to be spending some time in prayer. In fact, the St. John's Baptist Church will be engaged in a 12-hour prayer marathon from 12 a.m., from, sorry, from 6 a.m., to 6 p.m., from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And those persons who have been identified as leaders of your groups, please be aware that uh, the group will be praying about specific issues, and, uh, and we look forward to, uh, to each member of the church. This is the church at prayer. This is not just a prayer group meeting. This is not just the prayer warriors meeting. This is the church Praying in a scattered manner. But as scattered as we are, we know that all our prayers will rise up to God as one prayer. And so let's, let's pray together. Let's, let's ask God. Let's not faint, but let's keep on praying because we have so much to pray for. We want to, of course, also remember today, uh, uh, we send out condolences to the, uh, the family of Brother Richard Taylor, Dr. Richard Taylor, who lost his mom. Last week, we pray for you. Uh, we continue to pray for Brother Vassal and his wife, Nolene, and their family, their daughter-in-law, uh, Laverne, and the children. We pray that God will continue to watch over you. This battle that you are in, we want you to know that you are not alone. You have God's presence, but you also have the prayers and the presence of God's people. And so God is going to bring, bring you through this victoriously, triumphantly. You'll be stronger. You'll be better. You'll be wiser when you come out of this. Amen? And we know that you will. So God bless you all and keep you. And now let us receive the benediction. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit, rest, remain and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen.